In 2002, when I was 16, my parents went on vacation. While they were gone, I stayed at my older sister Lisa's apartment with her and my 8-year-old niece, Sarah. It was during fall break, so Sarah and I were out of school. Since it was only a two-bedroom apartment, Lisa let me sleep in Sarah's room, and Sarah slept in Lisa's room with her. On this particular morning, Sarah and I had both slept in. She was so excited that I was staying with them. She wanted to stay up all night watching Disney movies, so we did. Lisa had fallen asleep on the sofa, so I picked Sarah up and put her in Lisa's bed. Then I went to bed myself. The next morning, I woke up to a man's voice. Lisa's boyfriend, Gary, had a very recognizable deep voice, kind of like Vin Diesel. This voice wasn't Gary's voice at all. This voice was an older man and he sounded very agitated. I went into the living room to see who was here, and I saw the man sitting on the love seat closest to the front door, and Lisa was sitting in a chair adjacent to the love seat. He looked to be in his 60s and his shirt and jacket were nearly covered in blood splatter. She shot a fearful, surprised glance at me, as if she forgot I was there. The man stopped talking once he noticed Lisa had looked away from him. I made eye contact with him and he smiled. Then he placed the gun that he was holding on to the coffee table in front of him. I couldn't move, I didn't know what to do. My first thought was to get between him and Lisa somehow, but I knew I had to stay where I was because he would have to get past me to get to the bedroom where Sarah was still sleeping. I searched the man's face trying to figure out who he was. He looked familiar, but I couldn't place him. He broke the silence. Hey, I didn't know anybody else was here. I'm Eddie, Gary's stepdad. I faked a smile and gave a weak wave. He took out a cigarette and lit it. Lisa was still sitting on the sofa, seemingly bracing herself for whatever Eddie had planned. Eddie motioned for me to sit down on the bigger sofa across from him. I did as he said. He took out a bag of weed and some rolling papers and began to roll a joint. You smoke, youngster, he asked me. Lisa spoke up. No, he doesn't. That's my baby brother. He's only 16. Eddie laughed, looked at Lisa, then me and said, Damn, what the hell y'all feeding these kids? That's a big boy. Lisa laughed nervously. Eddie joined her, seemingly unaware of how uncomfortable we were. Oh damn, I got sidetracked. Let me finish telling you what this woman did, Lisa. Eddie went on to tell Lisa that he had just shot and killed a woman he knew because... She stole $100 from him the previous night, after he had passed out drunk at home. He said he knew it was her because he had a pistol whipped Gary's mother, and made her tell him who went through his wallet while he slept. He then told Lisa he regretted not killing Gary's mother because he felt like she had set him up. He said he'd also shot the woman's husband but was unsure if he was dead. He laughed and said he knew for sure the woman was dead because her head exploded like a watermelon. My stomach was in knots. I was sweating and I could no longer hide my fear. I heard Lisa's bedroom door open and from where I sat I saw Sarah walking across the hallway into the bathroom. Eddie looked in the direction of the hallway. Damn, Elisa, who else is here? Lisa spoke quickly. It's Sarah, please, Eddie. You know I don't allow smoking around her. Can you go on the patio with that? Lisa's voice trembled. Eddie must have heard the fear in her voice because he replied, Girl, what you scared of? I ain't gonna do nothing to you, you're good people. I just wanted to come see you before I go. You know the police is probably looking for me by now, but I just couldn't leave without seeing my favorite spades partner. Eddie smiled as he stood up and gathered his bag of weed, the joint, and the gun. I heard the toilet flush, then the sound of water running in the bathroom. I began to pray that Sarah wouldn't come out here before he left. 
Eddie must have read my thoughts because, he said, Don't worry, young blood. I'm going to get on out of here before that baby can see me like this. Lisa and I both stood up as he walked to the door. Lisa opened the door for him and he walked out. We watched through the window as he got into his car and drove away. Lisa quickly grabbed the phone and called 911. Sarah came out of the bathroom and asked if the scary man was gone. Lisa said yes and hugged Sarah. Sarah began to tell me she never liked Eddie because he acted strange and looked scary. When she heard his voice on her way to the bathroom, she stayed in there because she didn't want to come out and see him. I was pacing back and forth trying to process what had just happened. Lisa explained that Eddie was a drug addict and alcoholic. Gary's mother had kicked him out, but he would keep popping up at her house. She was already aware that Eddie had attacked Gary's mother because Gary had called to tell her, though they didn't know he'd killed anyone when he came to Lisa's house. Eddie was arrested shortly after our encounter and we had to talk to detectives. They told us the man he shot had died on the way to the hospital. It took years for me to forget the way he gleefully described killing that woman. He died in prison not long after he was convicted of the murders. Hey everyone, long time lurker, first time poster here. I had this experience a month ago now and haven't been able to stop thinking about it. Really curious to hear what you think might have been going on. I am a mid-twenties woman that was traveling solo through Europe for the month of March. I had the most incredible time and overall felt extremely safe. There was just one encounter that felt so bizarre and honestly scary. It was around 10 a.m. in a mid-sized city in Germany on a Sunday. I had just checked out of my hotel and was walking through the city center with my backpack on my way to the train station. Lots of people around waiting for the tram and walking. Super safe area. I noticed a woman standing in the middle of the street where the tram tracks were. She was wearing a backpack on her front, but not like a traveler's backpack, a smaller one. She looked maybe early 40s, wasn't disheveled and looked clean, was dressed appropriately for the weather, etc. Soon after I passed her, I heard her calling out in German and soon realized she was calling out to me. She was clearly not in distress asking for help. She wanted to make conversation and with many folks I'd be totally down for that. But something about this person was instantly not sitting right with me. I ignored her at first but she would not stop so as I kept walking I said, Sorry I don't speak German. In hindsight this was stupid. And later in my trip, I wouldn't have done it, but I was still getting used to all this. Oh, you want to speak American? She said, we can speak American. I ignored her, but soon became aware that she had started following me. I picked up my pace and ducked into a crowded bakery, thinking either she wouldn't see or at least I'd be around other people in a contained space. I ordered, but before I even sat, I saw her come in and order something too. I was pretty freaked out at this point. I sat down and put in my earbuds and opened a book, not actually listening to or reading anything, but hoping it would keep her from talking to me. Nope. She came over and sat at my table. I tried to ignore her, but again she was relentless, waving at me and smiling. I don't know how to describe her smile. It was like, just really forced and unnatural, like she was putting on some kind of act. I asked what she needed, and she told me that she'd seen me walking and thought I looked like I needed some compassion. I told her no, I was good, everything was fine, but thanks, trying to be as appeasing as possible while still making my disinterest clear. She just kept smiling at me and asked if I had money and a place to stay. 
I told her yes, I was fine. She started talking about various things. People she'd met on trains, dance classes, etc. Her English was not great, so I didn't really understand a lot of it. But suffice it to say, these were all completely random topics. The really strange thing, though, is that I didn't get the impression that she had a mental illness or any kind of neurodivergence that would explain a conversation like this. It felt like she was trying to think of ways to just keep talking to me. Like at times, I could see the wheels turning in her head as she tried to come up with something, anything else to say. This went on for probably five minutes. Finally, she offered to move to her own table. I said yes, that would be great if she could. She sat at the one closest to me, but even then tried to get my attention and talk to me. She finally sort of stopped, but still kept looking back at me and pulling out her smartphone to text someone. Also, she never once touched the massive slice of cake that she had bought at this bakery. There was one man, a fellow customer, sitting nearby who looked sympathetic to me and kept glancing over like he was suspicious of this woman and what was going on. But I don't think he spoke English, so he couldn't really understand, and it's not like I could have explained it to him as I don't speak German. My heart was racing. Finally, I decided I needed to get out of there. I kept checking Google Maps to see when the next tram would arrive. There was a stop almost right outside, and once it was just a minute away, I slipped out of the bakery while the woman was looking down at her phone and ran onto the tram. I watched the doors the whole time to make sure she didn't follow me on and didn't stop looking behind me until I was safe at the train station. I haven't been able to stop thinking about this and I don't know what to make of it. I met tons of outgoing people in Europe, people much more direct and sociable than Americans, but no one else ever made me feel the way this woman did. Something about the whole situation, following me, buying something that she never ate just so she could come into the bakery, looking back at me and texting someone, just felt so off. I believe I have pretty good instincts when it comes to people, and this person just didn't feel right from the beginning. I can't help but be afraid that she saw me with my backpack, quite obviously a tourist, and was planning on doing something to this naive and vulnerable American. I guess I'll never know, but I'm curious to hear if any of you have ideas, or if I'm just totally misreading a harmless situation. Thanks so much for reading. For a little bit of background, I'm a 24-year-old female who loves scary stories, horror movies, true crime, and so on. It takes a lot to scare me, though I haven't actually experienced many terrifying, life-threatening events, fortunately. On to the story. This was during the middle of August in North Texas in the summer of 2023. So the nighttime temperatures were around 100 degrees. My dad and one of my brothers, who's 11, drove an hour north into the countryside to go stargazing for my brother's scout merit badge. There are some twisty gravel roads in the forest as you approach Black Creek Lake. We got to see a coyote, a deer, and two raccoons. We live in a city, so we don't often see such animals. We thought that'd be our excitement for the night. We then finally made it to the recreational park grounds beside the lake. The layout is simple if you're standing in the round parking lot. Then the campgrounds are to the north and west, the lake is south, and the path in and out is east of us. There are no official campgrounds east of this recreational area, which is important for later. We got there around 10 p.m. and set up. We were able to successfully see some stars through my telescope as well as Saturn, which was exciting for us. Throughout this whole time though, there were two parties, 
or what might have been one group in the parking lot and surrounding nearby area. One party was kayaking and then later fishing from the boat ramp area west of us. To the north in the lot were two cars. From that direction, we were constantly hearing a loud, irritating voice of a woman who was obviously in a bad mood and didn't want to be there. She continuously cursed at someone or no one in particular, and at one point was mad at someone for taking her keys and obstructing her from driving, which obviously made it sound like she was drunk or under some other influence. At one point in the night, around 11 p.m., we hear someone loudly, sporadically, honk one of the car horns over and over in random patterns. Then we hear the obnoxious woman rudely tell someone to wake up over and over again. Then proceeding to hold down the horn for a few seconds at a time and continuing her assault on the horn and our ears. By this point, my family and I are just about ready to leave due to this loud commotion. I personally was fixing to go over there myself and tell her off, but I knew that probably wasn't the best idea. I definitely didn't want to put myself and my unborn baby in any danger. Then, for about 20 to 30 minutes, we were able to watch the stars in relative peace with little noise coming from the other two parties. Fortunately, none of these people were directly involved with what happened next, but it may have been the cause of it. Just before midnight, we packed up our stargazing stuff and got in the car. Now, the gravel path to exit is up a slight hill or slope, meaning from the parking lot you can't see past where the path goes up and around a couple trees. We drive up the hill and just as the headlights came back down to illuminate the path in front of us and the trees to our right side. It was right then and there that we see a man wearing only black shorts and no shirt. The timing was straight out of a horror movie to just suddenly see someone out of nowhere. He was in his late 20s or 30s and had short dark hair. Just as the light hit him, he was standing and walking right there just to the right of our car in front of us at a very close distance, only a couple feet away. Guy had been walking towards our direction and upon seeing us quickly raised both his arms to flip us off with both hands. He keeps his hands and arms raised and is quickly and loudly saying something to us with anger or something in his voice. We couldn't understand what he was saying though since we had the radio on and all this happened quickly. The second the man saw us, he started walking toward our car faster. My dad was driving slowly initially to avoid the agitated man, thinking he might need help. My dad in a confused voice says, What is he doing? But I just reply with, Nope, go go go, and we sped off. I knew that this was not a situation where we needed to stick around and ask questions. It freaked me out a little imagining what would have happened if the guy had reached the car a few seconds later if we hadn't sped off. I'm not very familiar with my dad's car and it scares me that I might have ended up pressing the wrong button to lock my door and the guy could have opened it and done who knows what. We left and never had anything else happen, but we did wonder who that guy was and where he came from. The direction he was walking from had no official campgrounds, only the forest. Maybe he lived in one of the scattered houses in the woods we'd passed by on our long journey. I wondered why he had been walking in our direction, toward the recreational area. My best theory is that he wanted to confront the group that had been honking the horn and waking up the entire forest. But upon seeing our car leave, maybe he thought it had been us making the racket. Even if that's not it or the man needed help, which is not likely considering his reaction to us, I couldn't help but feel a sense of danger. I hope that no harm came to those other two parties that night. <laughs>